Hello friends, we will now study the second part of the freeze drying lecture. In the first part we have seen the or we have studied the fundamental aspects of the freeze drying process. In this part of the lecture we will study the freeze drying equipment different systems that are available for the freeze drying as well as some product applications. In this slide you can see the freeze drying that is the freeze dryers freeze drying systems may be a pilot or laboratory scale and it may be or it is available systems are also for industrial and a large scale freeze dryer. The industrial or large scale freeze dryers may be of multi batch type continuous freeze dryer or tunnel freeze dryers. The continuous freeze dryers are again they can be classified into two groups continuous tray freeze dryer or continuous tray less freeze dryer. The tray less freeze dryers are different vibrational freeze dryer, circular plate dryers, vacuum spray freeze dryer, belt freeze dryers and atmospheric freeze dryers. So, let us study little details of or brief details of the these uh, equipment or drying, freeze drying systems. In this uh, figure we have shown you the schematic of the laboratory scale or pilot scale a freeze dryer. This contains that is you can see that is the different components are uh, highlighted marked that is what should be it uh, has a like here 1.1 is the two stage vacuum pump then exhaust filter valve etcetera etcetera you can read from the slide. But the pattern that is the back pilot scale or laboratory scale freeze dryers having capacity of about 2 to 20 kg of the frozen products are available in the market. So, the system consists of a freezing fluid system okay, and it can be sent to heat exchanger of the condenser or to the refrigeration coil of the product for freezing. Then heating circuit may be normally silicon oil heating fluid for heating the plate and defrosting the condenser. It consists vacuum system for evacuating air from apparatus before and during the drying processes and the chamber is often a bell jar with temperature of may be minus 45 degree Celsius and pressure of about 0.05 m bar. So, the different notations you can see it that it is we have already earlier discussed about the freeze drying equipments. Industrial freeze dryer may be that one pattern as you have seen in the first slide the multi batch freeze dryer these are normally programmed to minimize drying time and to maximize the production. It results into optimal utilization of the resources it makes possible the simultaneous production with increased operation and flexibility can see here that is the in that chamber there are condensers are provided insulated valves so that to avoid any heat loss etcetera and side that is these are the shelves which products can be kept and after the product is kept the door can is open and the system is provided with the even vacuum pump refrigeration etcetera for freezing the food cold traps and all those things. So, all necessary instruments so this is a multi Best type uh, freeze dryer. The other is a continuous freeze dryer. You can see in this figure. Obviously, since it is a continuous system, it involves less labor requirement and also less expensive process as compared to that of the batch process. It 
you can get opportunity here. It gives continuity in processing throughout the constant operating conditions etcetera can be maintained and it is generally used for freeze drying of product in trays as well as for freeze drying of agitated bulk materials. You can say here that is in the, the trays are here put and these trays they moved that is the heating plates are here in different chambers and the among the heating plates that is the product are contained on these trays. Okay. There is a entry lock and there is a exit lock entry lock. So, the product is loaded in this section here then it is moved to the next section entry lock is closed open uh, closed and then it moves to the one from one section to other section etcetera and every section is provided with the condenser systems. Okay. So, that is the drying tunnel. So, the material and the conveyor belt appropriately conveyor belt in kept in trays it moves the trays moves and they come in contact with the heating plates and finally, the inert gas is used to unopen that is the open the lock okay, exit lock and the material is collected toward the end of the process. So, this is about uh, continuous freeze dryer similarly, the continuous tray freeze dryer you can see here it is the a picture of a taken from the literature of a continuous tray freeze dryer has been shown here and the product is placed on trays and move along the dryer in a continuous manner. There are two main types depending on the type of the condenser used that is one is the you can say the continuous tray freeze dryer where the condenser is provided in the same chamber in which the trays are moving etcetera the condenser plates are alongside the tray heater assembly whereas, in other systems the condenser are placed separately they are joined to the first by a butterfly valve and they are generally used in pharmaceutical industries as well as in the freeze drying of food materials particularly the sensitive food materials etcetera. So, these are one of the uh, material which is used by the industry more often one of the type of the dryer. The other you can say continuous tray less freeze dryer in this figure you can see here that is there is a these are the heating plates here. So, in this heating plates the material that is they are the vibrational plates plate and the from this product in there are of course, appropriate valves etcetera for ent providing entry lock and exit lock etcetera that is given all right. So, inside the proper vacuum is contained through the heating plate in that is temperature desired temperature is maintained and it is provided for vibration of the this plate etcetera. So, the material is may be it can be fluidized or it can be just passed through it comes and moves through platens like this this direction and finally, it is given in and out. Okay. So, this is the continuous trailless freeze dryer or vibrational freeze dryer and of course, there are several freeze dryers which here this is a, a type of dryer which does not use any tray that is similarly there are many dryers. Okay. The other is the this is the circular circular plate dryer where there is these circular plates are there heating platens and the assembly to condenser etcetera this is the entry the product comes here that is so right the product is put and then these circular plates that is like that is the material moves from one plate to other plate one plate to other plate it finally, comes to the bottom and by the time it comes to the bottom it is dried and then exit lock is open and 
to go. So, of course, in all these cases, that is the movement of the belt and speed is at temperature pressure, all this properly maintained. So, this is a pictorial or a schematic presentation of a circular plate dryer. The other is the atmospheric freeze dryer, a schematic presentation you can see here in this figure. Okay. The fluidized fine particles of the adsorbent and frozen product are put inside a chamber which is called dry chamber or in a column. Okay. These are the adsorbent are put in the dry chamber and the frozen product these are the frozen product. Okay. And fluidization media is a dry and cold gas air or nitrogen etcetera. The heat of adsorption actually provides the heat for sublimation in this case. And finally, a final heating step with the hot air to remove the bound water in the product is provided towards the end. So, this system is a again a good system, but it uh, there is a here you can have one can have a good heat transfer coefficient. So, so, heat transfer coefficient is there the process efficiency may be more that is, uh, but it uh, it is a mass transfer is comparatively lower because of mass transfer rate is lower than that of the vacuum drying since the because in the case of vacuum. So, vacuum freeze dryer they result in the faster freezing or faster sublimation, but here because of the an atmospheric case the mass transfer or sublimation rate is comparatively lower. So, that is one major drawback of this system. So, the other system is the vacuum spray freeze dryers you can see a schematic here that is it contains there is one setup here that is which is provided with the refrigerated coil per and this with suitable atomizers that is the atomized that is the product fluid is atomized by spray nozzles and it all in the form of droplets and these droplets as they come toward the atom they get frozen. So, the frozen mass is allowed to fall on this moving belt and this belt moves where it comes in contact with that is inside the vacuum chamber where this vacuum may be around 67 Pascal or so. It comes in contact with the heating platens where the temperature related heat of sublimation is provided and the ice sublimes. Okay. And in this process the people have worked and they have reported that around 12 to 15 percent moisture loss is obtained here and obtained particle size particles. 150 micron or micrometer. Tunnel freeze dryer, another it is like uh, this uh, tray freeze dryer which you have seen earlier, continuous tray freeze dryer you have seen. So, similarly, here and the same concept here the food, food material, frozen food products in the they are loaded in the trolleys and these trolleys they pass through that is whole trolley is passing through the vacuum chambers that is it is the trolley enters that is a gate valve entry gate valve and exit gate valves are provided the condensers etcetera are provided different conductors condenser depending upon the that is the requirement of the condensing unit that is it depends on the requirements of this uh, pressure uh, pressure and other temperature etcetera required into the system capacity of the plant and all those things. And then the important thing is that it moves that is the food material on the trolleys loaded and it moves through a large vacuum lock at the one end and of the tunnel and it is discharged at the other end of the tunnel. This plant capacity utilization is an advantage here in this multi batch plant, but it lacks the flexibility for simultaneous production of different products or in switching 
from one product to another product, it is generally is a difficult here in this process. Okay. So, after we have uh, discussed these things, let us see there are in the as far as the technology of the freeze drying is concerned, there are four important aspects needs to be considered. That is, those are pre freezing, freeze concentration, condensing, and defrosting, and all these processes are must be they must be considered, they are required proper meticulous conduct of these process are required in order to ensure the process economy and quality of the finally processed product. As far as the pre freezing is concerned, it is done to reduce the freeze drying time cycle. Okay. There may be direct contact freezing or indirect contact freezing. In the direct contact pre freezing, individual quick freezing like IQF, atmospheric bed freezing or immersion freezing etcetera may be used for the direct contact freezing. Whereas, plate freezing, air blast freezing or scrapped surface heat exchangers can be used for indirect uh, contact freezing. And here in the figure, the it has been explained schematically with the schematic diagram that is where in the direct contact freezing the liquid food material or other food material in which form it has to be frozen, it comes in the direct contact with the freezing media or freezing plates. Whereas, in the case of indirect there is a some medium involved in between the freezing medium as well as the food there is no direct contact. So, some it transfer and other the physical barrier etcetera those issues are there. So, these that needs to be properly resolved in order to have a process efficiency. Then freeze concentration that is another important aspect in the freeze drying processes particularly required to reduce the cost of the product that is to improve the process economy because otherwise it becomes a very costly process to remove the moisture from the food material in the or sublime. From the. So, a part of the or maximum as maximum as high as possible the ice content is uh, separated all right, in the fridge concentration process. So, it the process involves that the of course, the feed is the crystal uh, nucleation and then crystal growth. So, this is the basically freezing process. So, the uh, water is converted into the ice and these ice then is separated from the system either through that is the centrifugation process normally is the slushes of the ice crystals they are crushed and these fine ice crystals either by centrifugation or by other system that they are heated and they are converted into they are evaporated in this system. So, you can say that is the scrapped heat exchanger etcetera may be used for removal of the ice through this crystallizer. There is a this is a crystallizer where the material is coming. So, it is pre cooled it goes to the ice slurry crust ice pass through this heat exchanger system where the ice is allowed to melt and removed from the high purity water and this water can be and then liquid concentrate is recycled again. So, as once the final concentration desired final concentration is obtained. So, this concentrate is used for the next process of the freeze drying. So, this in fact the R separately here there may be some centrifugal system through which this ice crystals that is small ice crystals can be separated. So, this results in the process condensation again you know that the it prevents the water vapor from returning to the product or passing into the vacuum pump and condensers are arranged. So, that the vapor flow sweeps the non condensable compounds into the vapor stream and they are removed by the vacuum pump and this there is a condensation is a 
very good effective condensers and the condensers are condensers etcetera they should be proper the effective. So, that uh, it is removal of the sublimation process and rate of the mass transfer is greatly influenced by this proper condensation. So, that the moisture which is coming as they are, they are sublimed in the gas form, they are condensed here and converted into ice and then finally, removed from the system. Then defrosting, defrosting that is the amount of ice that is deposited in the condenser grows with the progress of the freeze drying process. So, it is should be continuously removed. So, that is the removal of ice from the condenser is called defrosting. Right. So, and this becomes again to get the process efficiency, process economics, the defrosting is an very, uh, very, very important step. If it is not defrosted regularly, if the ice is deposited inside the condenser system, then rate of the sublimation will be uh, adversely affected and the process economy or process efficiency will be adverse. So, one has to see that that is the ice which is formed it is properly defrosted and removed from the system. Different ways for defrosting include passing hot air or hot water or steam or even using a heating element. So, here in this case is actually that is the ice is again converted into liquid water and then allowed to flow out of the condenser. Collapse very very important phenomena we need to understand and which again influences the process efficiency as well as product characteristics, its structural composition etcetera, the nutrient losses and all those things. Okay. And as you could know that the freezing process it results into the separation of ice and a concentrated solution of the solute that is the most of the unbound water is converted into ice and the other so there is some water remains that is the unfrozen and in this unfrozen that is all the solutes are concentrated. So, there is a change in the bulk density is obtained when is the product is heated to a certain temperature and because of this, this change in the bulk density is known as collapse as you can see here in this figure that is the, the collapsing capillaries particularly that is in this capillary where in the unfrozen mass and it present in the concentrated solutes and these capillaries with the change in temperature they collapse and because of that there may be it might have influence on the structural or loss of volatiles and all those things. And this collapse occurs when mobility of the concentrate phase increases and the temperature at which collapse occurs is a accordingly a function of the moisture content and solutes of the food. Depends, it may depends that is the what is the moisture content particularly in the initial food and in the finally, frozen food in the concentration of the solutes, type of the solute and the water unfrozen water present in this. So, all these factors will determine that at what is the temperature actually required for the collapse are needed the at which temperature it will collapse and then it should the process should be accordingly controlled. Another important aspect factors is the which governs the quality of the finally, freeze dried food material is the type of freezing used or whether it is slow freezing is used or fast freezing is used. As you can see here that uh, in this picture there are there is one is the slow freezing or slow cooling process or there is the rapid cooling or rapid freezing process. In the rapid cooling it results in the large number of ice crystal formation okay, and all the ice crystals are uniformly distributed. So, this in fact is useful that is this type of fast cooling is useful because there is no structural dislocation, no cellular rupture or damage of the cellular matrix because the ice crystals are uniformly formed throughout the system. So, this results in a better structure, 
better uh, texture of the finally dried material. However, this uh, process that is the conduct of the process becomes a little difficult because this uh, this uh, resulting products here there are lot of resistances to the drying or to the lot of resistances to the sublimation because the sub ice is uniformly distributed. So, all this factor so resistance to the sublimation is more. So, difficult to dry. On the other hand the slow cooling or slow freezing results in a large ice crystal okay? and because the large ice crystals it may result into the structural change structural damage all right particularly in the material like uh, when the frozen meat or flesh etcetera that is after the thawing it may if uh, it has been frozen by a slow cooling process which you can see here that is this results into maybe large amount of ice crystals etcetera okay and this ice crystals large ice crystals which are formed they may cause the shrinkage of the cellular matrix that is there is a with pressure on the cell it may get distorted. So, the finally, when you freeze dry it that is these ice crystal size may result into the uneven or ununiform particle size and etcetera or even after drying that is when further it is regain the moisture when rain in the case of muscle etcetera the structural damage etcetera may be appear. So, these two phenomena that is the collapse and the freezing rate these two are the important factors which contribute to the product quality during freeze drying process and these should be properly analyzed and considered. So, this as far as the volatile retention in the freeze drying is concerned that is these two factors is in fact also they govern to a great extent the volatile retention it is better retention of uh, sensory characteristics aroma nutritional qualities etcetera the freeze dryer product long self life and the volatiles are retained by entrapment within the dry food matrix or they are present in the volatiles are localized and strongly bound in the micro regions which are small areas in the dried material or the open porous structure may cause oxidative deterioration of the lipids and minor changes to protein starches or other carbohydrate may also take place. So, the, so but in general the rich dyed material the volatile retention is more. So, as far as the application of rich drying in food processing is concerned again although it is a considered to be a costlier process, but still it is recommended or rather it is being used for a la processing of large scale processing of the various products particularly for those products which have heat sensitive components like fruits, vegetables, meat, meat products, poultry, fish, shell fish etcetera all these things where there is a danger that during conventional dehydration or he process or heat may result into the destruction of the quality or volatilization. So, the high value heat sensitive materials for their for prevention of the nutritional qualities health uh, uh, bioactive components health ingredients that is these are the freeze drying is a recommended process. Even the largest application of the freeze drying commercially is the drying of that is uh, preparation of the freeze dried instant coffee and tea. Even the freeze drying of egg oak for making egg oak powder it can be done at a comparatively economical cost. Dairy products even the starter cultures for yogurt, cheese etcetera they are generally freeze dried. When freeze dried microorganisms are frequently used for fermentation processes they are used in bio conversion reactions or even for uh, keeping are storing these uh, microorganisms for longer period of time in the research purposes etcetera or in the microbiological laboratory in fact lyophilization or freeze drying is an important step. So, even the 
coloring pigments in food material etc. that is the food colors and pigments is a natural color they are freeze dried to improve their self life without any deterioration in their color hue or in their quality. We will take one or two examples that is one is the freeze dried instant coffee. So, for the step for the preparation of the freeze dried coffee that is done it is one that is market in the market freeze dried coffee are available because the quality that is obtained after the freeze drying is much much better. So, the quality consider quality considerations are they dominate over the little cost involved in the process. So, normally there are two steps like no, number one that is they are there is extraction, filtration and concentration then recovery of aromatics and then reserving the aroma and flavor. So, the coffee or even instant tea also that is first a brew is made and then this brew is filtered and concentrated using suitable equipment etcetera and then from these concentrates, concentrates of that is the coffee extract as well as the coffee brew concentrate as well as even separately the similar processes you also used for instant tea manufacturing. So, they are from the volatile aromas are recovered and they are kept aside then that is de-aromatized concentrated this uh, coffee or uh, tea extracts is frozen and this frozen in mass is passed to the like uh, uh, sent to the there is some time after freezing it is cooled and uh, ground for size reduction grinding is done and then in the particle size there is ground particles they are subject to the sublimation sublimation in the appropriate conditions by uh, using appropriate freeze drying equipment and after the sublimation may be sometime at the here itself or even after sublimation the aroma which was uh, recovered earlier it is again added into the dried material and finally, the product is packaged. So, this is the flow diagram showing the manufacture of is freeze dried instant tea and coffee. So, although for that drying the spray drying can also be used, but the freeze drying gives a better result as far as the quality is concerned in comparison to those that is of the spray dried instant tea. Okay. So, as I have shown you in the earlier diagram that is the freeze drying of coffee tea involves that is the primary freezing where the coffee extract is chilled to a slurry consistency at around minus 6 degree Celsius then it is cooled that is the pre chilled slush is placed on a seat belt tray or drums and further cooled in a series of steps until it reaches a temperature of minus 40 to minus 45 degree Celsius and then the slabs of ice ground into particles of for the drying and two small are melted return and return to the primary freezing state that is after drying is very fine set of things they are recirculated to the primary drying step. So, finally, there is this uh, particles appropriately sized ground particles uh, frozen mass they are fed to the freeze dryer that is frozen particles are sent to the drying chamber where under proper conditions of heat and vacuum the ice is vaporized or it is sublimized and removed from the product and we get the instant dried freeze coffee or Okay. This uh, under area is the freeze dried uh, fruit powders or their slices. The freeze, this is uh, another very important aspect where the food industry the, the freeze drying technology can be utilized and particularly for preparation of the fruit drinks, ice cream, thick sex, sex, yogurt, etcetera, used to make candy and toffee, making instant juice mixes 
flavoring instant foods. So, all these particularly these freeze dried products can be made to prepare that is a food ingredients even they can they are used in rich cream filling chocolate products, cereals and fruit bars etcetera. Even freeze dried spices and vegetables are used in manufacturing of instant vegetables like noodles, soup, snacks and different kinds of fast food etcetera. So, finally, friends I can summarize that freeze drying is a good alternative to preserve foods that contain high quantities of proteins as well as volatiles. And also the foods that are susceptible to browning reactions, they make a good ingredient for freeze drying. The porous structure resulting from the sublimation of ice allows instant properties in the freeze dried product and which we see in the freeze dried instant tea and coffee. Some important parameters however, need to be considered for a specific product and those are freezing procedure, collapse temperature, secondary drying end point, vacuum condenser size and heat source. So, if all these parameters are properly controlled, properly maintained and these parameters that is what should be these parameters depending upon the food characteristics etcetera, they are done by proper engineering calculations, equations etcetera which we have discussed. Then actually it becomes and if they are properly conducted, the process is properly conducted, this becomes a very, very good process for drying up the food materials or high value food materials. With this I thank you for your patience hearing.